Hey, Void. How you doing? All right. Let's wrap this up. The end of my paranormal activity collection. Which is pretty much everything, save for the one random Japanese offshoot and Next of Kin, which came out much later. As for the longest time, the Ghost Dimension, number six, was the end of the series. Though, this I didn't really mention it in number four, but that both four and five really don't really end so much. Particularly four, they just kind of stop. And it's kind of where this one goes also. Okay, so. First off, this one's big gimmick was being in 3D. And it had a specialty camera, which lets you kind of see the demon Toby a little bit more than you could before. Usually manifest as this black particles. Which I was on board with at first. Okay, so. <clears throat> this movie is set up with a family with their young daughter. They have their then an uncle coming to live, uh, stay with them for the holidays. And they discover, while putting up their Christmas decorations, a box with a camera. And they start seeing some strange things through it. They also find a bunch of tapes which show, you know, and then uh, young uh, Katie and uh, Christy. I think that was her name anyway. Uh, going through, like, this weird training for ghost for the whole demon cult thing which is in the previous movie stuff i guess they forgot or were made to forget but it's strange because the way they go about it, it makes it seem like they're being properly indoctrinated so when they later have no memory and are actively resisting things it just seems strange feels like a continuity issue but and this one kind of invokes more of like the when they start to hear through like some psychic visions describing the house that they're in freaks out the people watching and as stranger things keep happening particularly picking up those particles hovering around their daughter <clears throat> they realize that something must be going on and uh someone may have manipulated them to be here because their daughter has an auspicious birth date and a whole bunch of other stuff for it okay so I did not see this one in theaters, and so the 3D gimmick was completely lost on me. Alright, so... This movie wasn't the strongest. And a lot of that comes from the weird particle things you're seeing through the, the gimmick camera. I guess originally they could be kind of jumping out at the screen for the 3D effect, but that is lost, so it doesn't really give you much. And then it also lets you essentially see Toby. So we finally see the demon. <clears throat> which mostly is just this black shadowy mass. Which works sometimes, doesn't work others. Now, if it's just standing there as a hu giant humanoid shadow shape that's oozing darkness, okay, that was effective. When it's slithering across the ceiling, uh, feeling like some sort of spider snake thing, not really working. Also, when it's just jumping at the camera for a s lazy jump scare, where you can see this shadowy figure in it, it's it's losing it. So the whole less is more approach has been completely abandoned here for a bunch of CG effects. Oh boy! <clears throat> so apparently, this whole franchise has been building up to this, which is essentially with using this girl and Hunter, who doesn't really even really appear in this movie, though they reference having needed him for this, I guess. Uh, they needed to... They were able to open a doorway for Toby's to be born in actuality. And pretty much come into our world. And... So, it's weird that they made such a big deal about Hunter and that he's even, he seems pretty much completely absent in this film focusing on an entirely different girl. So, the movie just doesn't... It feels like the last one where they're trying to shoehorn it in, except for this time they're doing a regular paranormal activity film with... But they're just going, they're just going through the same things again, but just with a different family, and... It just isn't working. 
It wasn't bad, but it was definitely dull. So I didn't dislike as much as I did the fourth one, but this one really had little going for it. I will say the little girl doing the whole possession thing was acting her ass off, so I will give props to that little girl. She did pretty she did pretty good in this. But <sighs> I also will say I like how while well, they're doing the one parent skeptical, one parent a believer, and they even reverse it. And then I mean usually it's the dad who's the skeptic. I mean, that's it's been kinda of common throughout the paranormal activities that the dad with the camera is the one who's realizing something. Or it's a kid. This one, he's the one doing it, but and she and the wife is denying it through a lot of it. But when she actually starts seeing some things, she gets on board fairly quickly. And there's actually a criticism number four I forgot to mention in there is they jump really quick to it being ghosts, despite there being barely anything that happens. And then suddenly, like, oh, our house is haunted. It's like, really? This one, they at least do see some things going on before jumping to it. So I'll give it that one. So I'll rate this one above that one, give it a four MacGuffins, since I think I gave four a three. This one could be a four. It was a weak entry, which is a shame because, like I said, I really liked the marked ones, and this was actually the first time I'd seen uh, The Ghost Dimension, which was just yesterday. No, day before. Anyway. Also, what's with the title? What ghost dimension? There has never been a ghost in Paranormal Activity. That's the whole point of it was it was not ghosts, it's demons. And they even pretty much reused the same trope of having a guy come in and say, oh, yep, this is this is a demon. Yep, uh, I'll go do get some more info. They pretty much reused that for the first one. So why are they calling it ghost dimension? There's no ghosts. It never was. Ah, oh boy, oh boy. Well, I'm glad I saw it to kind of round out the tri the series, but it doesn't make me eager to see Next of Kin, because they definitely have been on a downward slope. They had a little bit of a bump with Marked Ones. I'll get to see Next of Kin at some point, I'm sure, but otherwise the whole series here just is okay. Yep. I mean, the first couple were not bad. And it's definitely Desert in Place is a classic series at this point because there are some really good stuff here. But overall, it definitely suffers from that sequelitis. And they're trying to make more out of what they had. They keep trying to make it seem like there's this big thing planned all together. But the more they do, the more plot holes are showing. And it's starting to collapse under its own weight. So let's move away from Toby. Let's... Go back to, uh, then if you're going to do more stuff like this, make us more isolated incidents. You can add something new, like the marked ones did fine. And apparently I was just reading that, uh, I criticized the marked ones, the main problem I had was them shoehorning in a connection to the end, and, uh, uh to par their OG paranormal activity. Apparently that was, uh, not the original plan, they were just going to keep it self-contained, so... Guys! Let the franchise... Go! You don't have to connect everything! Not everything has to be Marvel! Just chill! Alrighty. See you soon, Void.